Hello there, my name is Larry Rosen of the Ajax Public Library. Welcome to this tween scratch adventure game. This is where you get to code your own video and we're gonna go through the steps, show you how to do it. Let's get started right now. Just gonna share my screen here so that you can see exactly what's gonna happen in this event. There we go. Okay, so this is, this is Scratch coding. And what is Scratch? It's a free programming language where you can create your own interactive stories, games, and animations. And you're going to be creating a video um, that has a cartoon character, and you get to tell it what to do, because you are the programmer or the coder. And um, just a couple of questions we're going to answer here. Is this for complete beginners? Um, this is for those who kind of have a basic understanding of Scratch. And for those that are completely new to Scratch, we also offer family coding clubs, and uh, that's where we go over the basics of Scratch. But for this particular event, just a basic understanding of how Scratch works. Do you have to know programming to use Scratch? Uh, not really. <laughs> it's, it's basically logic. So if you want your character to move five spaces to the right, you would just tell the character to move five spaces to the right. You do it by programming and moving blocks on the screen. You don't have to type a whole bunch of things. You're moving blocks, which makes it really easy. And I'm going to show you how to do this. Um, can you use Scratch on an iPad or a tablet? Um, in addition to your laptop? Yes, you can. But for this particular demonstration, it's preferable if you use a desktop computer or a laptop computer because you have a bigger screen and there's less things that can be hidden. Okay. And, and your browser is where we are going to be doing this scratch activity. And you can use either Chrome or Firefox. Okay, don't use Edge or Explorer. It's, it just seems to work better if you use Chrome or Firefox, okay? If you do not yet have a, a free Scratch account, please go to this website, scratch.mit.edu. Go there first in your Chrome or your Firefox browser, and then click Join Scratch and then you'll give yourself a password and get set up. And the reason you wanna do that is because it lets you save what you've done. If you just go on there and do Scratch things, after you're done, you won't be able to save it unless you have a Scratch account. So it's always good to have that. And the uh, final thing I wanted to say before we actually do the activity is, um, everybody goes at their own pace. I'm gonna be going at a certain pace, but don't worry if, um, if I'm going a little bit too fast, just sit back, watch, and then there's a PDF that uh, explains what I'm doing so you can do it at your own pace, go at your own pace uh, after this video is done, okay? And um, so there's no rush, take your time, and um, I am just going to switch from the PowerPoint to the actual Scratch website, and then we'll get started. Okay, so I'm just gonna share my screen again, and then we are going to do some scratching. There we go. Now, I am in a small little window here, and you can move this window uh, so it will not be in your way. Whenever you need to move the window, depending on how big your screen is, go ahead and move the window. And this, what you're looking at here, is the Scratch website. And um, we are going to create an activity. It's actually an adventure game. It's kind of, kind of fun. Um, and 
what you see here is on the left, on the left hand side, you see all of these, they look like blocks. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag some of these blocks into the middle. And that's going to be our code. Why are we dragging blocks? It's because we want this character on the right to do things. And we make this character, it's called a sprite. We make this character move things by moving blocks, these blocks from the left right into the middle. And I'm going to show you how it's done. It's real easy. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is see this background. It's all white. We want a different background. What do you think? So in order to do that, we, uh, we go to the background finder. And that is right at the bottom right hand corner. You see when I move, when I hover over it, it, it says choose a backdrop. So I'm going to click it. And when I click it, we get a whole bunch of choices of backgrounds. And you get to choose what you want. I'm going to choose, um, I like the beach. So I'm going to choose beach Malibu. I just click it. And what it's going to do is it puts the background right in, in the middle uh, of your um, video. Okay, so that's step one. Don't worry, there's not too many steps. Step two is we have to um, choose a character for our game. Now, the cat is already in there. Do we want to use a cat? Maybe you could, but I'm going to show you how to choose a different character. So do you remember where we went to get the backdrops down here in the bottom right corner? Now we're going to just move to the left a little bit where it says choose a sprite. And we're going to click choose a sprite and then you get a whole bunch of different characters or sprites. And we get to choose uh, who we want to be in our Scratch Adventure Game video. So I'm going to choose, I'll choose Abby. So I click on Abby. And now Abby is there with the cat. Now you'll notice at the bottom right, you've got two sprites here. You've got Abby and you've got the cat. Whichever one is highlighted, that's what we're working on. So for instance, if I highlight the cat at the bottom here, then I can move the cat. But if I switch to Abby, then Abby is highlighted and I can move Abby. If I, if I don't click down here and I just move the cat, then the cat is highlighted once again. So whichever one is highlighted down here, that's the sprite that we're working on, okay? So I don't, for this particular video, I don't need the cat. So I'm going to uh, get rid of the cat. And um, to do that, you see that little X right next to the cat at the bottom here? I'm going to click the X and now we just got Abby. Make things easy right now, okay? We can get into the tough stuff later. Okay, so we've got our character, we've got our backdrop. So what if we wanted the character to say something in a, in a little speech bubble just before we start? Scratch can do that and we're going to make the, uh, we're going to get Abby to speak. And we're going to look for, if you'll notice on the left side here, this is where we start dragging the blocks into the middle. But we have to choose the right block to get her to speak. So the blocks are, um, 
sectioned off into, if you'll notice here that you've got motion blocks, you've got sound blocks, you've got event blocks, you've got uh, sensing blocks, all kinds of different blocks that do different things. We're not going to use all of them, we're just going to use a few for this particular. Um, so we need to find something. We want Abby to say something. So we have to find a block that actually gets um, Abby to say something. So would that be, would that be in the motion? Wouldn't be motion because you're not moving anything. Let's look under sound and see if there's a say, something that says say. Um, it is not there. So we'll continue to look until we find something that says say. Okay, and we just keep looking. Oh, look at this, it's under the looks section. Okay, it's under looks, say. There's a whole bunch of them. So we want Abby to say something. So we're gonna drag right into the middle and um, we're gonna have her say hello for two seconds. I'm just gonna change that by double clicking and I'm gonna change what she says. Okay, now we need to get her to speak, but she doesn't just speak. At the beginning of all these codes, we have to put something in there that says, when you click, when you click um, the flag, there's the start and the stop for our video. See the green flag? And there's the stop button. So we have to, in the middle, in the middle of this, uh, just before she speaks, we have to tell, the program that we're about to click on the flag. So where's the flag? Well, let's look under. It's not going to be motion. It's not going to be sound. It's probably going to be under events. And there's the top one. It says when fl green flag clicked. So I'm going to drag that and click it right over top. So when the green flag is clicked, she's going to speak. And let's see if it worked. I'm going to press the green flag. And she spoke for two seconds. Okay, so it worked. All right. Now, uh, what do we have to do next? We have to code the sprite to move the mouse pointer. So uh, what the object of this game is, you only have a certain amount of time and you're gonna wanna move the sprite and try to catch, um, catch items. The items are gonna be kind of moving all over the place and you're gonna move your sprite to catch um, the object and, and see how many you can get in, the, in a certain amount of time. So we have to program Abby so that she follows the mouse. So whenever I move the mouse, Abby will follow the mouse. <laughs> and, um, and uh, okay. Oh, don't worry about that. The project cannot save, but it might be an internet, internet thing. We'll fix that. It's not a problem. We can still continue. All right, so to program Annie, we have to uh, just do a quick setup here. Okay, so to get Annie to follow the cursor, She's always going to be following the cursor. 
no matter how long the game lasts. Okay, so that's a forever thing. She's always going to be doing it. So we have to look for a forever loop. Okay, the forever um, loop. And that would be, let's, let's just look around, see if we can find it. The forever loop. Is it under events? Scrolling down. Is it under control? Aha, there's the forever loop. Okay, um, but stay with me because I'm going to make it easy for you. There's the forever loop. So I'm going to drag this right here. Because um, again, we are, we are making it so that whenever we move that mouse, Abby is going to forever follow the mouse. Okay. And um, we need her to kind of um, glide. That's what the scratch calls it, glide, glide to, with the, uh, glide with the, with the mouse. And we have to find the glide, the glide, um, the glide block. Let's look under motion and see if the glide block is there. We do. We do see a glide. And you'll notice that I'm looking at my notes here because you don't have to memorize things. As long as you have it, it's all right. And again, we've got the PDF for you um, to download. So you don't have to memorize everything, but it's all here. Um, so we need the glide. And there's the glide. There's a couple of glides here. Um, we want the glide. This is the one that we want. Glide, right now it says glide one second to random position, but we're going to change that. So I'm going to just move this inside of the forever loop because we always want Abby to follow. And uh, we're going to change the seconds to 0 0.3. It just makes her glide better. And we're going to change it says random position, we're going to change that to mouse pointer. What did I just do? Let's find out. I'm going to press the green flag and let's watch what happens on the right hand side here. She says hello. And you'll notice that she is following my cursor. Why is she following my cursor? Because we did a forever loop. She's always going to follow. And she's going to glide 0 0.3 seconds to wherever the mouse pointer is. Okay. With me so far? And I'm just going to stop that right there. Oh, it left her in the middle of the air. But that's all right. <laughs> so this is the code right there to get Abby to do that. Um, let's continue. Why are, why, why are we getting Abby to move around like that? Because she's going to be catching things. She's going to be catching a different sprite, a different um, character, a different sprite. So we have to get something for Abby to catch. So again, we're going to um, choose a sprite. for her to catch. So I'm just going to scroll down so I can see my sprites here. Choose a sprite. And I click on that and we see lots of things. Do I want Abby to chase a balloon or an apple or a ball? A whole bunch of things. I'll just get her to chase a ball for now. So I click on the ball. Now you'll notice when, as soon as I did that, the code in the middle disappeared. And that's because the ball is highlighted and we don't have code for the ball yet. If I click on Abby at the bottom right here, the code returns. So that's the code for Abby. If I click on the ball. There's no code yet. Okay. That's why the code disappears. 
uh, whichever sprite is highlighted, that's the code that you see. All right, so we've got Abby in there and we've got a ball. So now we have to, we have to code the ball so that it notices when Abby touches it. We have to tell the ball when, to notice when Abby touches the ball, okay? And again, this is a forever thing. It's always gonna happen. Whenever Abby touches the ball, um, something's gonna happen. So we need that forever loop in there. And the forever loop, where did I find that? We have to, is it under events? Let's see, events, no, maybe it's under control. There it is, forever loop. Okay, um, so I'm gonna drag that out. Now remember, we're coding the ball now. We're not coding Abby, Abby's done. So that's the forever loop sitting there, but remember, we need that flag at the beginning to start all the code. So we gotta put that flag in there. So where's the flag? That is that a is that a sound? Is that a sound? I'm just clicking on sound. No, it's not a sound. It's more, I think it's more of an event. There it is. When the flag is clicked. So I'm gonna drag that one right over to there, to the top. So when the flag is clicked. Something is gonna happen with the ball forever, but we haven't put that in just yet. We're going to do that now. Um, so the ball has to wait until Abby touches it, right? This is all logic. The ball is just sitting there. It's waiting for Abby, waiting for you to move your mouse for Abby to touch it. So we need a wait for, a wait for block, uh, a wait until. So where is the wait until? Let's look under events. Is there a wait until? Let's look under control. Wait, there's a wait one second, but I'm looking for something that is wait. There it is, wait until. The ball is gonna wait until Abby touches it before it does something. So I'm gonna drag this wait until right in between the forever. Wait until what? We have to wait until Abby touches it. Um, so it says wait until, and then there's nothing here. So it doesn't know. We have to tell it because we're programmers. We have to tell it why it's waiting. Waiting until and we have to look for something that says touching because Abby's gonna touch the ball. Where is the touching? Well, that, that's part of sensing, I think. Um, wait until touching. There it is, touching. And now it says touching mouse pointer, but we can fix that. So I'm going to drag that right into this little blank space. Wait until Touching, now there's a choice here. And we're gonna choose Abby because we want, we want the ball to wait until it's touching Abby. Okay, we are programming this ball. Soon this ball is gonna be very smart. So what happens when the ball touches Abby? Um, I would like a sound to happen. Whenever Abby touches the ball, I would like a sound to occur. And that is, um, that's gonna be in the sounds uh, category. Start sound, play sound. There's a few choices here and you get to try things. Some things might not work, but I like start sound. So I'm gonna drag that one right underneath. So what we've done so far is when the green flag is clicked, a forever loop starts, and then the ball just waits until it's touching Abby. And when it touches Abby, it's gonna make 
a sound. What choices do we have here? Pop or boing, or you could record your own. So I'm gonna choose boing because it's a funnier sound and I like funny sounds. Uh, so after Abby touches the ball, it goes boing. And then I want the ball to go to a different location because if, it, if the ball just sits there and Abby keeps touching it, it's too easy. So we want a random location for that ball after she touches it. So we want the ball to go to a random different position and the go to, where is the go to block? Let's find out. Could it be under motion? Let's see. There it is, go to, I'm gonna drag this one out. Still inside the forever loop, go to random position. Have we done this correctly? Can it be as simple as this? Let's see. I'm going to click on the green flag and let's see what happens. Abby says hello from the Ajax Public Library. Abby is following me because we already programmed her. Now let's see what happens when I touch the ball. It went boing and the ball went into a different location. Let's try it again. Okay, let's try it again. A forever loop, it's always gonna continue forever because we have that forever loop in there. Makes a noise, goes to a different location every time I click on it. How you doing? It's easy, isn't it? Okay, so this is, a, this is a game, right? So we have to make it into a game. So we have to, uh, games have scoring, right? We have to keep score of what, um, of what's happening so you can get better every time. So how can we make this keep score? Um, and we're going to do that right now. So in order to do a score for this game, we wanna keep score, we have to create something that is called a variable, okay? Where are the variables? What color are variables? Let's just look around. Oh, there is one that says variables, so that kind of helps us right there. So if I click on variables, We want to make a new variable that's called score. And there's where you can make a variable. You just click on make a variable. And it says, well, what do you want to call your new variable? And I'm just going to call it score. Oop. Yes. C O R E and then OK. And this is the first part of creating a variable. When I did that, you'll notice at the top left of the video screen it says score equals zero. We're going to program that so that whenever Abby touches the ball, the score will go up one. It's not that difficult. 